going on guys? Hope all we're doing. Welcome to a new video tutorial from iPinus. Today, we're going to dive right into the ESX class syntax. So if you have been wondering a lot uh, for a really long time about ESX and really want to learn about ESX or if you haven't or you have actually still want to learn ESX but you haven't got the opportunity yet, there's the opportunity to learn. It's not the whole ESX in this video tutorial, but if you really like to learn more about ESX topics and uh, grab the, the modern JavaScript into your knowledge bucket thing and try to master things up with the new features of the ESX. So today I'm just gonna cover the class syntax of the ESX. So if you don't know, the JavaScript doesn't have actually classes at all on the basic JavaScript, but ESX comes up and brought, uh, brought us actually the class syntax with initialized and has brought a brand new word not only classes a lot of other features that change JavaScript completely from a small programming language to a big scaled programming language that everyone pretty much right, right nowadays uses for web development so classes are very important and very very necessary to, for you to know if you really want to develop modern web applications also if you really want to like be a modern web developer classes are very very important as well as the ESX so for this video tutorial I'm just gonna cover the classes and start just diving into about the syntax of the classes and how they actually work and why they are very very important and very very powerful as a JavaScript developer so start by I'm having here a code editor so you you can use your favorite code editor I'm using Visual, Visual Studio Code or you can use an online code editor like CodePen or CodePost or something like that but this is gonna do the job for us and also I'm gonna use Node.js so make sure to go ahead and install Node.js I have a full course series about Node.js on my website in here just scroll and let's just search on the website you're gonna find Node.js in there make sure to learn more about that Node.js also here and this project I'm gonna use Node.js for compiling this if you really want to make your project compile to the web so you're gonna need a couple of other things to do that to compile ESX. So make sure to search about how to bring a uh, to compile ESX files into the ESX uh, or ES5 files for like browser support and stuff like that. Just Google that and you can find a lot of answers about the ESX compilations. So I'm just gonna use notes for that. So actually let's start by learning what is classes. So classes are more like objects on JavaScript. So if you're familiar with objects, uh, you declare an object like uh, you'd say like let's obj and with the curly braces in here you can give it the attributes and attributes like key value pairs so you give it here the key and you give it colon then you give it the value in here I don't know value of the key and so on and so forth you can declare a couple of things you can it, it can handle arrays and arrays can handle objects and nasty things so JavaScript is so awesome so incredible like that also you can put in uh, whatever like variables in here like floats doubles integer variables uh, uh, you can put objects inside objects and other objects inside those all of the objects and so on and so forth so JavaScript supports all of that so this is actually how objects works also you can put in here functions in that, uh, inside objects and run these functions uh, within that particular object so objects on JavaScript are very nasty and they can just uh, they are actually very flexible so you can make them react however you tell them to they will react upon your changes or upon your what, what we have to what you actually actually tell them to do so this actually what objects classes are more like objects but a little bit more suitable for a greater job and for more uh, flexible code manipulation so so let's say you for declaring a class all you do is just type in a class and here you, after the class keyword you give it the name of the class you want to declare let's say I'm gonna use in here like an animal class or something like that so I'm just gonna give it like an animal and that's it so this is all you need to do for declaring class then open a color brace and close and color brace and here we go you've got a class right now now here this is like the declaration of a class so you need to declare uh, the the class syntax you can give it methods and uh, like particular objects so first First things first, the class has a constructor. So constructor is whenever you try to initiate this class, this constructor is gonna be called. The first thing is gonna be called is a constructor, and the constructor is a method. So it's typed like constructor. Uh, as you can see, we get it with the interlicense and the constructor. As I've said, whenever you try to initiate this class, the animal class, you try to initiate this class, and the constructor is gonna be like the first method 
is going to be called automatically for you. So here, whatever you put initialization code or something like that, it's just going to be done for you whenever you try to initialize this animal class. And constructor actually use it for uh, initialization things. So here you have this, like you can imagine this, if, if classes comes up for you a little bit hard and you can't quietly imagine what is classes, take them as an object. So and take this uh, constructor thing as initializer. So here the constructor, what it does, whenever you try to initialize, you know, to initiate this and create an instance of this animal class the constructor just gonna go ahead and initialize whatever code you put in here so you, tr you can try to initialize variables in here and actually variables to declare variables in their classes you can't like say in here like if you're if you're like C developer or PHP or something like that you can't say in here like this is a variable let's say uh, my variable in here and equals to something and like 50 and so on and so forth no this is this is not how it being done with JavaScript and like probably some of you might say why that is happening how can I declare my variables I've got this feeling the first time I started learning about a cla JavaScript classes and I, I've got this like a very weird thing that how can I declare my variables how functions can return stuff and stuff like that but yeah over time of recording I've got uh, I've got the idea behind the scenes why they have made it looks like that and why they haven't actually made it to declare variables then work with them uh, right right or on actually so to declare a variable all you can do is this this keyword and this keyword refers to the actual class instance so this means this actual class if you are under another class this means whatever class you are under it or under under the class actually and this and you give it a dot in here after the dot you name any variable this is how you declare a variable name it and you assign to it any value like me uh, hello world or something like that uh, hello world I can't spell hello world even hello world I can't spell it I don't know why so you can spell hello world put in into a variable and this variable is gonna be like declared into this class scope so whatever into whatever method in here you're going to define or you're gonna use on this class you can access this dot name uh, easily and this is not can actually it's it's not a, like usually um, done only under the constructor so you can declare any variables anytime and do any method as long as you are under the class uh, the actual class scope so you can create another method so let's say like spit uh, spit name and this method is how you can declare a method you give it a method name you give it like a parentheses and you give it a curly braces to define the actual method uh, implementation so this is how you declare methods and you can call them from the actual class instance so let's say this dot name equals hello world but what we want is to pass in the animal name and we want to initialize that so this is what I mean by initialization so you give it some kind of like uh, an, an, an initialized state like a name the first name of the an, uh, in animal and the class is going to take that and put it into the actual class instance or the actual class save it as a variable into the class and put in into it the name that we have put it into the constructor so whenever we try to initiate this animal we're just gonna give it the name and it's just gonna store it into this class simple as that now under this split name what we want is just gonna console log uh, my name is and I just give it uh, like the, this dot name so whatever you want to put into it or reference that variable you must use this keyword so you're telling it you're not actually accessing any global variables let's say like you're gonna have um, you're gonna have like another variable called name in here and it's like hello something like that in this case what are using this that guarantee you that you're not going to access this global variable else you are actually going to access the variable under the class instance under the class scope so this what it actually what it does it's just going to prevent us from accessing global variables so if you want to access this global variable all you do is just remove this and you are actually good to go so what we want to see we actually need to use this and this is all we need to use for the spit name so simple as that now saving this uh, let's just go ahead and initially initiate or create an instance of this animal class so we use that so you can use variable or let's if you have noticed me I use let a lot but uh, I love using let's it just looks a little bit prettier than using ver or var keyword to declare a variable I don't know everyone has its own preferences so let's declare a variable and let's call this um, I don't know like a shark or something <laughs> something pretty awkward 
and a shark I'm just gonna initiate this so to initiate this you use the new keyword so whatever uh, you want to initiate or create an instance of a class you use the new keyword and you give it the class name then a parenthesis and this parenthesis what it does it's just gonna call the constructor so just gonna go ahead and call the constructor and as you can see whenever I use this parenthesis it's just gonna give me the name field so the constructor so take this as the constructor and you need to pass in the actual name of the uh, animal so shark let's just name it shark or something and here we go this is how we actually create an instance of a class very simple very straightforward you can now all you do is just gonna go with the shark and you can spit name this is how you can call methods you give it the actual instance that you have saved and you give it the method name dots using the dot notation and you give it the spit name and if this one takes uh, like arguments and stuff you can pass in arguments in here and so on and so forth this is how it simply works now if we try to run that I'm gonna use the as I've said node.js so I'm gonna use node.js from the command line or from the terminal make sure to use terminal on Visual Studio Code there's an integrated terminal also I have a full video tutorial uh, about Visual Studio Code so just go ahead and watch or oh, just check them out uh, on my website so that would be really good for you to learn what we're actually doing uh, I can't type clear now let me just run that using node I'm just gonna put it under main.js and yeah as you can see we get my name is in shark so now we are spitting the shark name or the animal name so spit name and we're just gonna display the actual name that we have just pass it in endure or when actually trying to create the instance of the class as simple as that as you can see this is how classes are very simplified version of classes but there is more complicated features of classes you can use on your own application so this is just a very very basic snippets of how actually classes are being uh, like defined and like initiated and the actual word example so simple as that this is how actually classes work now let's say that uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit about inheritance and extending from like a base class so let's say this animal is a base class and what we want is to have like multiple animal classes so this is like the base or the parent class and we want to just declare another animal class that is gonna have like the same things but a bit more uh, like rather than spit name you can have I don't know something like yields or something and the shark says I don't know how how shark actually reacts underwater or something like this but you can you can, you've got the point actually so let's say we're gonna declare a child class and we can see them how it actually works so let's just say it's gonna be the the, the shark and we want to extend it from the animal class so you say extends the keyword use the ex extends keyword and you give it which class you want to extend from and we're going to give it the animal color braces and here we've got our class so calling the constructor in here as well so call the constructor what we need since this one takes the name make sure whenever you're trying to implement uh, the constructor enter a child class of whatever base class in here and whenever the base class is using a constructor so make sure to pass in the base class uh, variables first or the base class arguments first in order to initialize that and you can pass in whatever th other things um, like later on on this let's say I don't know the shark age that would be really awkward but uh, or let's say like a size or long or length or something like this uh, okay let's say the shark length three meters or something like this so this is the constructor and whenever you are actually into the like the child class you need to call in the super so make sure to do that whenever you are extending from another class call in the super and the super means you are calling to the constructor of the base class so here you are initiating the animal class or the class you are extending from so make sure to do that if you don't it's gonna give you a really weird error you can't quietly understand at all so make sure to use the super class to initiate that whenever you are using the constructor and do the child class simple as that so here as I said when you are actually uh, constructing it from another child class you need to pass in the arguments of the first one so here you need to pass in the arguments of the name simple as that and we're just gonna have with the length and say equals length so the length is only available into the shark or the child uh, scope simple as that so this is how we can get it and here we have the spit name now this shark class also has the spit name like uh, the spit name function or the spit name method so we don't need to redefine that 
at all. So we can access the spit name and just gonna spit us the name and with no problems. So here what we want is to extend this base class and add more methods. So let's say um, uh, like what is what is my length and just gonna spit the length of this one. So just gonna console log uh, length just gonna equals this the length simple as that so this method is just gonna extend from or extend actually the base class and add another method but this method still exists under the char class since we are extending from the animal now simple as that let's just go ahead and initiate this and let's say uh, shark equals shark and here calling the constructor of course as you can see give us which name and just gonna give it the shark name and whatever length so we're just gonna give it three points uh, I don't know 3.5 like 3.5 meters or something like that or whatever feet and this is actually how you initiate things so let's just go ahead and use the shark if you can notice that whenever we do use that it's gonna give us the options of using the spit name even though the spit name isn't defined under the child thing but it's defined under the parent which means it's just gonna extend everything from it so we can use the spit name in here and we can also use the new uh, method that we have created only into the sh like the child thing and what is my length simple as that so here this should give us a really nice output of the name and the length of the shark so uh, trying to do that node main.js and as you can see just gonna give us my name is shark the same thing we have set in here and also the length is 3.5 uh, as as a normal shark would be I don't know <laughs> I'm not actually uh, good about sharks or something like that don't don't take that on your mind that I'm shark lovers I just randomly use this word I don't know how it just came up on my mind but it just did just take it like this okay now jumping on the other cool feature with the ESX classes so now let's say we want to use like setters and getters so here you have like this length uh, this length local variable of the shark class you can what you can do in here you can change this into runtime so you can say length and you can assign any new ver any new value into this uh, attribute of the class whatever but what is not is this is not a good like this is not a good habit at all on on the development field so what we need is to like whenever we want to change this this length is to use a method so we can declare a method called set length and here we pass in the new length and we're gonna just set the this length equals the new length and so on and so forth but you can use it this this is like the uh, the old way what actually all developers would use you still can use that it's very efficient very reliable but what we want to use is the new set syntax so you put in the set and you give it whatever name in here so let's say it's just gonna go with, with set length so it's, this is not gonna be like also a function but when you call it this is not gonna be actually a, a real method so you can call so here it takes the length and we use this dot length equals length simple as that this is gonna just set us the uh, the old length to a new length and so on and so forth now let's just go with the the shark and whenever we try to set length as you can see uh, Visual Studio Code shows us this is not a function or this is not a method but this is like a variable what why we have just uh, like declared it or define it as a method but this is not a method since we're using the set keyword this is taking it as a variable so we set length we can't call it like that we must this is a variable so we're just gonna assign to it something and let's say like just gonna be becomes four, four feet or something as you can see this is not a method uh, it's pretty good like using this without a method thing so you can take it as um, like a local variable something like that or a public variable that you can change whenever you want safely and we're just gonna go with no main.js and as you can see the length has changed from 3.5 into the newly assigned length which is for fit as simple as that this is how actually sets works you can also use the get it's pretty much the same thing you can get the length and uh, here we're just gonna do is return um, return this dot length dot length and 
so on and so forth. This is actually how it works in a very basic way. So you can use also the git length and the git length also can be used as, as you can see the git length. It's also a variable. All you're gonna do is just gonna return to you uh, the, the actual length. You can't set anything in here, but all you can do is just grab some information from this variable. This variable only for referencing and grabbing the value, not for setting the value or something like that. So this is how it's very efficient with the set and a git. Now moving on into the other, like the cool thing is the static method. So if you have never heard about static methods, uh, what you do to declare a static method is you say the static keyword before the method and here you give it like the, the thing. So let's just go ahead with calculates, uh, calculates, I don't know, calculates, what calculates? Uh, I, don't know, I can't find what to do. Uh, let's just go ahead with uh, who I am. Who am I? Okay, and this one, what it does, just gonna print out uh, this dot name. So if we try to now to call this after using the shark, uh, just go with the shark dot who am I? Uh, since it's a method, so we can clearly use that uh, with no problems. So if we can try no main dodge, and we've got a, an error in here. As simple as that. So we've got who am I is not a function. So some of you might say, why would that? We have declared a function. But remember, it is a static, a static method. It's not a normal method. So what is about static methods? Static methods are uh, like special methods. So these methods are under the actual instance. So they are runtime methods, while the static methods are non-runtime methods. So the static method has no relationship with the actual class instance. So this is the class instance. So whenever we are actually initiate a new class instance and we assign it to this, so this, this keyword in here, whenever we are actually into the runtime, this is gonna be actually replaced with this instance in here. So just gonna JavaScript, take this instance and replace the this into the class with a shark and just gonna work. So you can access shark.length and shark.length and shark.name and so on and so forth. And you can also get these functions, but the static method is not, not runtime, which means it doesn't know about this instance at all. So which means it can't actually access the variables of that class. It doesn't know about it, any other function that the, uh, the the actual class has it doesn't actually know about this keyword or the super keyword that allow you to access actually the uh, the base class in here so if you can access any base class uh, variables or they have like special variables only available into the base class you can access into the super in here all of that is not available into the static methods all you can do in here is print something or do something has no relation with the actual class instance, which means has no relation with the variables, has no relation with the methods that the class holds, nothing like that. So you can do like console logs, some uh, hard coded or uh, text or something like this, uh, hello world or something. This would work if you try to print out a hello world in here. Uh, you can calculate some things and return like uh, like static things, uh, but you can't access any variables in here and you have no relation with the actual class instance. So statics doesn't know about the actual class instance at all. All it does it have is you can return or print out or do something like the class that has no relation actually with the class. Simple as that. Now if we try to go ahead with the clear right now and try to run this again, and as you can see in here, we've got like who am I has is not a function. We're still getting like that. I remember when I said like the shark or the who am I method is not actually has no relation with the actual instance. So which means we can't access that into the instance. What we can access from is the actual class. So we take this class as an object and it does have that method. Uh, like it doesn't, it does actually know about the who am I method under the actual class, uh, inst uh, the actual class, the, the object itself. And this is called like object uh, methods, not instance ob uh, instance method. While those methods called instance method, this one called object method. So it only you can access from the class and you can here say, who am I? And just gonna give you a, like uh, the, 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 uh, 
the method and you can access it. Remember that I've not used the capital uh, letter in here the, of the shark. I've just used the shark itself, the actual class name. And if you try to save that, let me grab actually the terminal in here, clear everything up and bring that up. And as you can see, we've got hello world successfully printed for us with no problem. So as you can see, we've got the shark in here. Who am I after uh, trying to access it from the actual class name, not from the actual instance. So this is what about a class a static method. You can use static methods on a variety of things. You can like console log some uh, errors. You can console log, I don't know, bring some stuff specifically for that uh, uh, an animal or the animal class, or you can do some check-in before that and so on and so forth. So it's very useful some kind, some, sometimes, not all of the time actually, but what you need to use is like this method. So I guess it's pretty much actually guys for the ESX syntax classes. So this is what we need to cover so far about classes, initialization and basic stuff. I think the video has gone very, very long right now. So yeah, we need to stop this video. And that was actually guys, thank you guys for watching. I really, really do hope you enjoyed all. If you have any video suggestions, anything at all, I'll be very happy. Also, don't forget about the subscription and like, comments. I'll be very, very happy. And reading your comments makes me feel really, really nice. So, thank you guys for watching again. I will catch you all in the next video tutorial.